I'm a film collector, and I was looking on eBay one evening, and I saw uh, this film that was going for an enormous amount of money, and there were a lot of bids on it, like 30 or 40 bids. And uh, I looked at the film, and it was only about maybe three minutes long, and it was selling for several thousand dollars. And it was a film called Psychburn. So out of curiosity, I uh, wrote the person who was uh, selling uh, this film, and he wrote back uh, quite simply, but that's a J.X. Williams film, of course it's going to sell for $3,000 or, or whatever. And so that led to the question, who is J.X. Williams and what is this film? Uh, so I asked uh, this fellow who was uh, selling this film to send me a video copy because I just wanted to see uh, what all the uh, hullabaloo uh, was about. And he did. And uh, I watched the film, and I guess I wouldn't be exaggerating to say that it changed my life. Um, it was a remarkable uh, short film, uh, sort of a psychedelic uh, experimental film. I continued uh, to search uh, for other uh, J.X. Williams uh, films on eBay, as well as uh, other, um, you know, newspapers and word of mouth and whatever. And uh, I kept, you know, going after uh, these very, very hard to find films. And uh, my luck, well, it was not so bad and it was not so good. I think maybe I was able to come up with about 45 minutes of short films that he did. I found none of the features, which were all on 35 millimeter and were much, much harder to find. Um, well, the films that I am exhibiting uh, tonight are all uh, mostly, at least, uh, found footage works where uh, J.X. Williams had taken uh, pieces of other films and uh, edited them together into these very elaborate uh, film mosaics. Not all of his work is found footage, but this is uh, definitely uh, one of the techniques that he's uh, well noted for. <laughs> I had enough that I felt comfortable releasing um, a DVD of his work, uh, sort of a mini anthology, since uh, these wonderful films weren't uh, available on video before. Uh, so uh, I was uh, just about to release uh, this DVD uh, when one evening, uh, I think it was a Sunday night, uh, the phone rang and uh, I picked it up and there was no one speaking. Instead, I just got this wheezy noise like <laughs> something like that. And then suddenly I, I'm about to hang up because it's been 15, 20 seconds and suddenly I hear this voice, you, you, I know where you live. Stop fucking with my films. And well, I think you can guess that this was uh, J.X. Williams. He was not happy that I was going to release uh, this DVD.
Aviv show is very important uh, for uh, its uh, political and social content uh, for a number of reasons. Uh, one of the main reasons uh, is that he was probably the first director to uh, talk about the JFK assassination, you know, in a fictional film. You know, many, many years before, say, Oliver Stone or, um, you know, many, many of those, uh, you know, films about the assassination. And also he was uh, one of the first to talk about the mafia in frank terms, not simply as sort of a, you know, 40s gangster film, but really something that was more real, a little bit stark, a little bit more realistic, a la, you know, Martin Scorsese or Francis Ford Coppola, and those things didn't really happen until uh, the 70s. It never would have shown in America in the theater, but even um, in Europe, I think he had some amount of trouble. I know that he was uh, briefly jailed in Rome uh, for the film, you know, because they considered it to be pornography, which it's not, obviously, but it does have a pornographic content. <laughs> We live in a sampling culture, definitely, with uh, DJs, VJs, you know, what have you, uh, you know, Final Cut Pro, iMovie. Yeah, everybody now can uh, can do this, uh, whereas I think 40 years ago it was a bit harder. In fact, uh, the reason JX Williams was able to do that was that he was working as a projectionist in a movie theater. And um, when he saw something he liked, he would just uh, take a, a razor and snip, snip. He'd take uh, the piece of film. Uh, but this was before uh, video recorders and obviously computers. And he had to do all of this, uh, just taking bits and pieces of film and tagging them all and eventually uh, putting them together in this film, which makes it all the more remarkable uh, because of how complex the film is, um, how well the footage is put together, as well as just the many, many uh, different pieces of film uh, that were used. I, I don't know how many films are used in Peep Show, but I'm sure it's close to a hundred. Bailey, won't you please come home? And this is Dick Biondi on Wonderful 890 WLS Chicago. Here's a traffic safety tip from Officer Vic. It's a traffic violation not to dim your lights at night when approaching a vehicle coming in the opposite direction. Be ready to dim your lights at night for others. Prevent an accident or a traffic fire. This is Officer Vic. We have 56 degrees in Chicago land, and we also have 2 minutes and 30 seconds past 11. Hey, who's paying for you to listen? What else have you asked? Peep Show is is uh, not necessarily a conspiracy film as much as a parody of conspiracy film, uh, because uh, you know, unlike say a film like Oliver Stone's JFK, which says you know I have the answer and here it is, um, the film is much more uh, subjective. Uh, the reality is much less uh, stable in that film. Uh, so in that case. Um, not to spoil it, uh, but j the film builds up a very large, complex uh, conspiracy theory involving uh, Frank Sinatra, Sam Giancana, um, JFK, uh, Cuba, and heroin smuggling. And then um, in the last few moments of the film, uh, proceeds to demolish the entire theory that had been building up uh, for you know, the entire movie. So, and I think that one of the things that J.X. Williams anticipated was um, how this JFK conspiracy theory, and in America at least, there are people even today who have spent their entire lives trying to guess, like, who killed Kennedy. There's so much information now, there's so many different theories that I don't think the truth will ever really be known. And I think JFK, I think JX um, anticipated that in, in Peep Show by showing uh, how easy it is to build up a conspiracy theory and how fragile it is and how easy it is uh, to destroy it the next moment. <laughs> Yeah. 
This is my peak. The first ward. I knew every window, every alley, every bus out ramp, every cop on the take, every cigar store with a bookie in the back. Walk you to corners. 4 p.m., 4 a.m., summer, winter, sick and well, stinking drunk and stone sober. I love my home. Is who I was. I had a decent life. A good salary, a fine car, a nice home, and even a bank account. I had good friends too. Very good friends. I'm writing, I'm directing a documentary on his life uh, called The Big Footnote. And um, it's going slowly. It's, it's going to be a pretty Herculean effort uh, to put together because there's a lot of people um, to talk to. And there's a lot of information uh, to be researched, and um, I guess you could say to some extent, uh, you know, the law enforcement talks about uncooperative witnesses, and uh, I would say in this project there's many uncooperative witnesses, uh, people that we'd like to have speak that may not want to, so, including JX himself in some cases. He's not um, a very uh, open person, and uh, you know things have been trying <laughs> at certain points. Uh, I don't want to say anything too bad because uh, you know he has helped me a lot in various areas. But you know, it's there's been easier things I could have done with my life. Uh, let me put it that way. Obviously, um, he did have a lot of, uh, you know, connections with the mafia. He was never a made guy, but he did, you know, consort with well-known gangsters, and that is pretty obvious in, in Peep Show. But then there was other terrain where it, it was quite surprising uh, some of the uh, subjects that um, he tackled um, because he was doing, um, you know, some something akin to French New Wave when he lived in Europe and uh, he wasn't really that well versed in that I think except maybe seeing a few Godard films or, or, or something like that but he was a quick study and immediately uh, started he did a, a love story I believe I haven't seen it <laughs> um, but he can, yeah he's done different things and he's a little bit smarter than he looks because he's he dropped out of high school but I'd say that you know some of the films are, are quite witty and intelligent and they don't look like they were made by a high school dropout I think that he's he's you know an autodidact as, as we say in English uh, he was he was self-taught learned, learned a lot of stuff and it was not always obvious uh, from you know the, the kind of film work that he did as well as the scripts that he wrote because keep in mind besides his own body of work he was a, a script writer in Hollywood uh, more of a ghost writer I guess you'd say because he was never credited uh, for the work he was on the communist blacklist but uh, some of the films and I, I really can't talk about them what you'd be surprised what what he wrote they were more like you know family films like Swiss Family Robinson or Lassie or something like that so you know, it's not always necessarily easy to connect his uh, life and work, but I think uh, Peep Show definitely was very much rooted in his life.
it's it's the misfortune, uh, especially in America, of living in a society that um, you know runs by the dollar, and uh, people are trying to do their best uh, to make some money. And uh, if you want to do that, uh, experimentation is not um, a very good way uh, to do that. It's too risky, unfortunately. That doesn't mean that people won't like it. I think that there's a lot of things uh, that people could experiment with that people would like. Uh, but, you know, business, big business is inherently uh, conservative and risk averse. And for that reason, uh, they have a certain idea of what they want to put out uh, from Hollywood, which usually involves either an action film or a love story, you know, and often now, you know, an adaptation of a bad TV show that people might not even like that much, but at least there's some familiarity with it. So there you go. And, um, you know, thank God there are people like J.X. Williams that did take, you know, a different route. to your first question is yes your passenger has a gun the answer to your second question however is no this is not a robbery let me show you something 